Well, hello. Welcome back. Today we're going to go over to the shop and I'm going to winterize my equipment. So, I'm not going to make a video of every little step I do, but I will show you the equipment and tell you what I do to it. Uh, otherwise, it would take hours and hours and hours. So, let's go over to the shop. Bear in mind, there's a lot of traffic going by, so you're going to hear a lot of cars. I'll try to keep it to a minimum. But let's go check out the equipment. step that I've done is I've removed my equipment from the trailer so I can visually inspect it. I'm going to look for missing parts and things like that. So prior to winter I'd already looked at my equipment and I see that this hose coming into these valves here, this is your pressure regulating valve and your bull whip that goes for the throttle and your relief and all that is kinked. So I'd already ordered a part. So one of the things I'll do this winter is actually take this copper hose off coming off of this air line that fills the tanks and I'll replace this piece of copper because that twisting right in here is not good for it. But I just left it alone to get through the season. As you can see there's a lot of dirt up on this but it's not sticking and the reason this looks like almost new is because after I run it and it becomes completely dry then I will spray it down with oil everywhere except for on electrical connections and that'll keep all this stuff from rusting. You can see a little bit here just wipes right off this would have just ate through the paint and rusted. Same with this stuff. Had I not done that, you can see it on these stickers. Just take my finger there. Without even a rag, you can see it's coming off because there's a little film of oil there. So I'll clean it all down and then I'll re-oil it up. I'll replace that line and that thing will be completely empty of gas and ready to go for next year. And I'll leave those drain cocks open on the bottom to make sure any water's drained out. On the pressure washer, this is the little four gallon a minute unit. Same thing, I'll run it having the uh, pop off, or not the pop off, but the, just a hose going and set it to a wand right to my buffer tank. And then I'll wipe it all down and keep it clean. And I'll look at these heads. I'll look at anything else that needs to be replaced and check stuff out. You know, but I know everything's fine on this and then I'll spray it all down just like I did with the other to keep all this stuff from getting rusty or corroded or whatnot. The next step is to hook up the compressor. Um, I have little fittings which I'll show you in a little while how I made them up. But basically they will go from the compressor. I'll hook them into each line going backwards. So it'll blow out every diaphragm pump, every accumulator. This little diaphragm pump, each one needs to be separate. All the hoses. You know, I'll blow those all out with air and they'll be ready to sit. Um, when I get done with that, then the last step is I'll take these tanks and I'll drain them out and then I'll flush them out inside and clean them up because there'll be little bits of sediments. And then the very last step, I should say actually, is then I'll take those filters, every filter that I have like that, and I will get all the dirt out of that. So that takes care of my equipment. I've cleaned it off. I've gotten rid of all the gas. I've blown out of lines. What step am I missing? What step is it? Oh yeah, I'll go through an inventory of every piece in here and make sure all my spares are where they're supposed to be and everything's here. And I will also empty the oil out of the pressure washers and change that. I'll change the oil filter if they have one, like the big machine back there has an oil filter. And then I will also change the oil in the pumps. And that includes the air compressor. This pump right here has special oil in it. Not special, but I have to use that oil or it won't be warranty from that company. But it is special. It's not 10W30. It's made for compressor heads. And then there's a separate oil for the Honda engine. And of course the pressure washers, they have pump oil for the pressure washer pump that you need to change. And then it too also has a small engine to change out. Now the four gallon, little gallon of mist, they don't have the oil filter, so you don't have to worry about that. You just drain it and refill it. But the bigger pump will actually have an oil filters on them, so you got to change those out. So I'll hook up these little hose fittings and show you how I hook them to my air compressor to get these lines out. Okay guys, I'm going to show you a simple way to make up some fittings to hook to your air compressor that will then hook to your pressure washer fittings. My air compressor uses a quarter inch male or actually the compressor has a female on it so I will use a male to plug into that hose coming off of the compressor. 
So it's quarter inch by three eighths iron pipe. Since my all my hose fittings are three eighths hose fittings with three eighths, I had to go from quarter inch to three eighths. So this will now either screw right into a female, then the other one will screw into a male. Okay, but what's the problem is these are quarter inch by quarter inch, not quarter inch by three eighths. So you need one of these. It's a quarter inch on one side that that fits into, and a three eighths on the other side that that fits into. Same thing with this one. Okay, comes in a package that looks like that. A tractor supply. It's a quarter inch MPT by three eighths MPT. All right. National Pipe Thread, that's what that stands for. So I will have this hooked to that just like the other one, and then hooked to that. So I'll have a male, so that'll go to my air compressor, that'll go to my male hoses or whatever, or my female connections, and then I'll have a female. And if I have any male connections, that'll go to my male connections, and that'll go to my air compressor. The only difference is, is this fitting. This hooks to your uh, pressure washer. It's a hose fitting on this side, so it's a male hose fitting, and then this side has three quarters or half. So the same thing will happen here. I'll take one of these, and I'll take one of those, and then inside here is the threading, so I had to get a half inch by quarter bushing. So the half inch will go in there, the three eighths will go, or the quarter inch will go there like that. So now I'm going from my air compressor through the bushing. We don't care about those threads. And then my pressure washer or any hose, female end will screw on there. Okay? And that comes in a package that looks like this. Uh, I'll tell you right on the package there, three quarter on the outside, half inch iron pipe on the inside, and then three quarter hose out here. So we'll put all these together and I'll show you what they look like. By the way, you don't need a lot of tape. It doesn't, you know, you're not cranking these down. They don't have to be waterproof. You're just blowing low pressure air through them. So here you can see I have my quarter inch female air fitting that comes from my compressor. It'll now fit this adapter, okay, on my pressure washer. It'll fit this adapter, which will go to my 3 8 quick connect. It'll fit this adapter, which will go to my male 3 8 quick connects. So whether I have a, a male or a female, I use one of these, and that goes to the hose. Easy peasy. So there you go, they're both running. The pressure washer is going through the hoses into the overflow tank. The air compressor is just leading off in the valves down there. Like I said, when they're done, they'll be completely out of gas. That's just the way I do it. I will probably take a little bit of carb spray and spray it in the air filters and pull it a couple times just to lube a little bit. But I really don't need to do that because I use sea foam in my gas. And generally, that just keeps everything oiled up, you know, if you're a couple winter months because they're indoors here anyway. So. So while that's going, I'll start hooking up the uh, air hoses and straining those out. And the first one I have connected to is the hose that comes from the house. So this would be like this, you hook it from the house, going through the reel, through the whip line, down to the tank. You can hear it coming out of that Hudson valve down there. And I'll just let it run. You see it all dripping down there? I'll just let it run for a little while. So all the air is out of that hose, it's out of that filter down back there, going through the Hudson valve over there. That's, uh, basically what I'm doing is any way the water flows in this hose, the water's flowing that way from the house to the buffer tank. So we're getting all that done. When I go and do the pressure washer, I'll hook it where the hose flows. It'll go through the pump, through this reel, out the end over here and out, you know, over there. And that means the pressure washer will be done. This will be done. Then all they have to do is this chemical line, which requires a different hookup for here. And 
then I just gotta flush the tanks out and clean them out. All right, I'm about ready to do the pressure washer. I've disconnected the line from my tank here. So since my tank is up in the trailer, it's just bleeding that, that buffer tank all the way down. And then I'll clean out that filter when I'm done. I put my air up here. It's going to blow down there through the low end, up around the high end, just like the water coming from the house would do, and come out here and blow all the way through the hose until it eventually will come out this hose right here. So let me go turn the compressor on. Uh, sorry for the noise, but I had to ran out of battery, so I had to bring the stupid cord over here. As you can see, I just turned the pressure washer on, or excuse me, the air compressor on. Just starting to come out of that hose a little bit. It's going to build up some pressure. But that hose will come out. So that's going through the pressure washer over there. Right down there, all the way through the pump. And coming out the outlet hose just like it would as if it was hooked up to a house, but it's air. So as that builds up, it'll come out a little faster. And then we'll do the other side of this unloader. Get that all blowed out. That'll uh, finish up blowing out the airlines, and I just got to blow out the diaphragm pumps. There, you can see it blowing out pretty good. Almost done. So here we're using the same 3/8 connection. We just disconnected at the reel. We're going to blow that 300 foot of line out, which is outside the door here. And you can see here it's just blowing all that water out of line. I'll do the same thing for those two reels. And the uh, eight gallon a minute pump over here will have to disconnect it and blow it this way and open this valve up. And then we'll go to the other trailer and do that one, but I'm not gonna fill them all that. This is long enough and you get the basic idea. Now that it's winter, it's also a good time since you're pressurizing everything or depressurizing it or dewatering it, whatever you want to call it. Uh, now's a good time to check out the status of your trailer. Look down there, I have some rust stains. Down over here, I got some fittings that are rusted. This is a linoleum floor that was in the trailer when I got it several years ago. Basically, you know, after every wash, I just rinse the whole trailer down inside with a low pressure uh, hose fresh water so I don't get a whole lot of, of uh, build up and my chemical tanks they're empty every time I use them so that's a chemical tank there that says main number two the other one's over there if I have to have two of them and uh, basically I fill it with water from the top right here and then put my chemical in put my soap in and do it if I have that's a 35 gallon. If I need a bigger tank, and I use the other 35 gallon, like if I'm doing a roof. If I need anything bigger than that, then we're using the other trailers. But you know, I'll replace these couple little fittings. I don't know, maybe in another year or two, I might rip this linoleum out and, and uh, rhino line it. But the floor is solid. I rinse it all the time. There's no rot underneath. I keep it inside. I don't haul it out in the winter time the salt. So that's good. I just gotta get all these little pumps and these air pumps cleaned out. And I'm gonna change these fittings. I took this up because I got these 90s in there. I'm just gonna come in with straight fittings and actually use cam locks, just like I do on that uh, pressure hose. I did that before on my pumps on my other trailer. I just didn't do it on this trailer. I slapped everything together real quick because I was in a hurry. So this will all be hooked up. You know the accumulator the way it is then i'll go a cam lock here cam lock there and here cam lock there cam lock everywhere cam lock but for right now they work fine so also in winter time i'm looking at different things i have spare parts you know this hose right here that's got to be sent in uh got to get some ends put on it it busted real close to the end and the reason it did that is because of the way i got this thing hooked up you know, inside there, one day I got to take this hose off, and but inside that hose, it just has the 90 degree elbow, it bent, so I replaced the hose, this one in there, and then put that one, and then a guy, one of my guys that used it, this hose is supposed to Velcro to this hose and then continue rolling it, he just rolled it right up so you can see where 
those lines are kinking now. They haven't busted through, but I got to take this whole thing off and redo that. But uh, anyway, so you look for things that you want to modify or things you got to fix, you know, parts you put away, maybe organize them a little better. For example, in this eight gallon, there was a gas tank here I'm taking off. You just saw it a little bit ago. I just took it off while that was running. But anyways, it goes to this thing up here, and the problem is there's no drain on it. And it's on a weird, funky kind of a little uh, bracket system they put in there. So basically, that California air, you draw fuel from here, but then this goes up through that canister and through the engine, and the vacuum makes it, you know, go up through that canister and everything, and puts the fumes back in the can or whatever. I don't know what it's doing. Anyways, I hate it. There's no drain on it. Normally, I'm pretty good about, you know, when I fill my stuff up, the last job or whatever, I put a little bit in, run the engine all the way down. I don't have to worry about it. But this one, it's a pain, so I'll probably take those brackets off and take that coil thing off and mount it a different way because you can't get to it. So that way I can take this off and either empty it real quick, but to be quite honest with you, the more I look at this dumb gas can that they put on here, I'll probably just get rid of it and get a regular six gallon tank with a little primer bowl and it'll stay primed and be better anyways. So that's a project for the winter, you know, that'll be in another tape later. You know, I got this in the trailer, there's broken parts. I got that hose over there. I got a couple guns I got to put together. I got all kinds of little stuff, you know, that I've got to sort through and clean up. And that's how that's how the winter time goes around here. So that's what we'll be doing. Hey everybody! Thank you so much for watching my videos. I really hope you enjoy them. If you have a comment or a question, leave it in the comments section below. I'll be glad to answer it as soon as I can, or maybe one of my subs will. But remember, please hit that subscribe button that's going to pop up, and YouTube is going to put more videos for you to watch over here. So enjoy yourself, grab the popcorn, and just remember, we really appreciate you being part of our family and subscribing to our channel. All the support you give us has been wonderful. So have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video.